Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Welcome to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. I'm Kelly Mesher Collins with the Diocese of Des Moines. On today's show, we're visiting with Joe and Kara Paul Peter of St. Francis Parish in West Des Moines. The Paul Peters are involved in the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulcher of Jerusalem, an organization into which Bishop Johnson will be inducted later this month. <laughs> but before we get to today's interview, let's find out what's on the bishop's mind. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Hey, uh, now we're into September. No. Uh, <laughs> into football in the air and, and all things like that. i grateful for the rain of the past weeks. But we yes. know some of our farmers have suffered greatly. Mm. Some have lost a portion of their crop, too. So our prayers are with them, and hopefully the parish communities can be supporting them in our rural and, and larger diocesan family. Wow, lots of signature events mm-hmm. and some things that have been kind of new inaugural events, including the celebration of education that we had last weekend, last Saturday, St. Thomas Aquinas in Indianola. I know our guests, the Paul Peters, were there, mm-hmm. along with 260 of their closest friends <laughs> as well. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, so we gave a chance to really affirm and lift up uh, teachers, administrators, and volunteers, including Nancy Kilbride from Council Bluff. She's mm-hmm. just been a longtime member of the St. Albert community. And then, as I've called her, the doyen of Catholic education and all things, uh, Sister Jude Fitzpatrick <laughs> in the diocese received special recognition. Many others were acknowledged, too, but uh, thanks to all those volunteers. It just created, I think it was both affirming, created good energy, and, yes, some support for our, our parochial mission and all that we're about. So uh, we know the, the teachers who came through the pandemic and the administrators who had to negotiate all that. So, uh, again, their dedication, their vocation to make disciples of Jesus Truly a work of evangelization as well. And then the Eucharistic procession. Wow. God smiled on us. The clouds right. parted. Uh, it was yes. beautiful. Uh, thanks to Father Aquinas and Nichols at the, at the Basilica, Jacob Heflin. But a procession that I'm told was 2.8 miles. That was a little bit more than I was anticipating. <laughs> and uh, at various points, I think we would have had 400 people or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Moines police uh, helped us uh, negotiate the intersections and kind of winding around arriving at the St. Ambrose Cathedral, where we did a litany for life and the benediction of the church, mm-hmm. uh, and then able to kind of hang out together. So I think all those young people, it was quite a sight seeing the 12 strollers lined up on the side of the cathedral. <laughs> Talk about a culture of I life. See you, that know? Photo, yes. you know, I had enough trouble just, you know, <laughs> carrying the monstrance or the, or the, uh, uh, my, my, uh, brochure, you know, so I just, uh, it's kind of funny, but those who have to carry, uh, 20 pound kid or something or, or a 60 pound kid, you know, as well, but, uh, mm-hmm. very good. Uh, d- uh, Catholic mass of the Holy spirit this past Tuesday. What a great way to kind of, uh, you know, invigorate the year, bring the Holy spirit upon us. Uh, new teachers were acknowledged in their commitment and our pr- new younger priests who are assigned there as well. Father Reed flood as chaplain and father James Downey, who will be on the teaching faculty there. So I mean, great witness and the diversity of vocations. I was told Father Reed Flood is among those you know, younger priests, uh, Father Nick Stark as well, who was inspired by Father, the late Father John Harmon, who passed away last week. And that was kind of sudden and sad news for us as well. Uh, he'd been very much affiliated with St. Pius X, who held a memorial mass for him this past Monday. Mm-hmm. And so commending him to the Lord, this servant who suffered much, but also brought great levity and also, I think, blessed many who had a pe- special place in his heart, maybe for people who might have otherwise been ignored or kind of mm-hmm. felt their own lowliness in a way. So mm-hmm. God's blessing upon him. We also want to give a shout out to Deacon Ron and Tammy Meyer, uh, their retirement after 21 years of being the formation coordinators for the permanent diaconate in the diocese. So uh, I don't think they've slowed down a bit, but mm-hmm. uh, can pour themselves into their energies uh, and including their grandchildren as well. Looking forward to uh, tomorrow. Uh, Saturday, a couple of little events there, a celebration of 10 years of the Nigerian Sisters, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Mother of Christ. I'll be celebrating Mass with them in the morning at their uh, resident convent there in Adair. And uh, they, we know they help out also at the St. Gregory Retreat Center in Bear. So Sister Mary Nesta, Sister Maria Chinwese, Sister Maria Andre, Sister Rose Mara, uh, you get a chance to really hang out with them as well. And then dedicate on Saturday night the New Altar in Ambo at St. Patrick's Parish in Council Bluffs. So that's kind of the crowning jewels for that parish, that beautiful parish that is flourishing and uh, lively with uh, families and so many different ages there. So always a, an impressive ceremony. All right, we're going to take a quick break. 
Monsignor Frank Bignano here. It's time to save the dates for the 2022 Christ Our Life Catholic Conference, Saturday and Sunday, September 24 and 25 at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. If you can't join us in person, live stream it. Once again, the conference offers a world-class lineup of speakers, the Holy Mass, incredible music, reconciliation, and adoration. Go to ChristOurLifeIowa.com for tickets and information. The 2022 Christ Our Life Catholic Conference, ChristOurLifeIowa.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Knights of Columbus, Borman and Pfeiffer Agencies, serving the Catholic families in Iowa. The Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society providing financial security to members and their families, specializing in life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability income insurance, and retirement annuities. And you can reach Knights of Columbus field agent Rob Ryan at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801. Thank you and God bless. Welcome back to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. Today we're visiting with Joe and Kara Paul Peter of St. Francis Parish in West Des Moines. The Paul Peters are involved in the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, an organization into which Bishop Johnson will be inducted later this month. Well, good morning, Joe and Kara. I feel good morning, good morning. I've got a you know, special bond and friendship with you. Anything that's going on in the Catholic world in the Diocese of Des Moines, you're there, you're all over it. And, uh, you know, Joe's hanging on water on the Eucharistic procession last Saturday. Yeah, Kara was there yesterday, too. So. I, mi- I missed you. Sorry, Kara. <laughs> you, know, you, you must have been on another corner, you know, <laughs> in my in that. But uh, so thank you for sustaining us. But uh, you, you bring your spirit and, and your goodness in so many ways. How long have you been a part of the whole diocese and West Des Moines community? Well, I, I grew up on the south side of Des Moines, went to St. Anthony. So, okay. I'm, you know, from birth, a, a Catholic. Uh, I grew up in West Des Moines. Um, I was Catholic right, became Catholic right before we got married. So we've been involved in the diocese for a number of years, but in West Des Moines, 23 years. 23 years, really active. Yeah. The last 23 years. Okay. All right. So it's South Side, but, but, you know, all those Italians, you didn't, uh, you know, you made it, managed to <laughs> 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 negotiate that. Yeah, yeah. somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Let me out. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you becoming Catholic beforehand. Mm-hmm. Could you just give us a little thumbnail of that? Was that? Sure. Um, we were living, we got engaged in Chicago, and I went through RCIA at a, a church in Schaumburg. Um, great decision. And I, you know, I'm thinking. Well, he now, didn't pressure you, did he? <laughs> no. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and I think now I've been Catholic longer than I haven't been Catholic. And I mean, just. Going through RCIA and then just everything I've done from that point on, um, getting involved in Bible studies and getting involved in different, you know, uh, especially when our kids went to Catholic school, you know, that just really kind of cements it all and, and, and helps you grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, her, her journey, maybe awakening yours or calling you deeper too, Oh, Joe? yeah, like uh, Kara got into Bible study before I did. And so well, that's uh, not a very Catholic thing. Is it? I know, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> don't want to rush into anything, you know. Um, but uh, so she really um, uh, not pressured, but recommended that I should probably go to a Bible study because she was <laughs> learning so much in there. And uh, so I did. And uh, it's great. Um, the Bible timeline, I think, was the second one that I did. And it was just fantastic. And it was just like, why didn't I know these things before, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So, and so you, you continually grow in your faith and all the things that we do, it's just a, you know, continual growth in our faith. And, uh, you know, we really enjoy it. So. Yeah. And the children lead us at times mm-hmm. and, and that, but uh, do you still kind of identify yourself as a convert? I know my dad being a convert, that, that's always kind of something in their identity. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. I think so. Even though, <laughs> you know, you're showing us how to yeah. do it and how yeah. to live this yeah. in such a beautiful way as well. So the children went to St. Francis of Sisi School? Or, right. Yeah, we have yeah. two daughters, yeah. uh, Megan and Emily. So and, uh, Emily, uh, they both went to Dowling, and Emily wound up in Loris College. So which I know you're happy to hear about that. Yes. And then uh, Megan went to Beloit. And uh, now Emily's a school teacher at St. Luke. Ooh, ooh, yeah. yeah. And, and Megan uh, has become a uh, funeral director. Fascinating. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so she had the life science and everything that uh, kind of to do the. Yep. yep. She took the, a lot of medical, you know, classes and biology classes and all that. So and so she's uh, 
Yeah, she really enjoys that that business. Yeah, well, I know we had the Parish Boys on here about two yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah. and when one lived well, I mean, it truly is a vocation mm-hmm. too. And, yes, you know, it's not almost just a business. ministry. So, yeah. and she did work for uh, uh, for Mark uh, for uh, during her internship or during as a student, yeah, a student. Yeah. So, okay, so warm by the best. Yeah. There, so. oh, yeah. Oh, good. Further, ever further. So, well, we're here today, kind of thinking about the equestrian order of the Holy Knights of the Holy Sepulchre. Just a, it's really, a mouthful. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the acronym alone is uh, something. Uh, Sometimes we just say E O H S J. Okay, or we say <laughs> the order. Yeah. Or, uh, well, those those little letters aren't just tripping off my tongue yet, <laughs> yeah. but maybe that's part of the initiation yeah. ritual yeah. that yeah. we'll have. So, tell us about how you came to be involved there and now have a leadership role. Yeah. Well, I think we were um, went to dinner with some friends from St. Francis, and they explained the order that they were in about the Holy Sepulchre. And uh, they thought that it would be something that we that they thought we should try or learn more about. And so uh, a few months later, I think we got a letter from Bishop Bates asking us to go to an informational meeting. So we did that and uh, met some great people there and learned about the order. And we decided to, to join the order from there. So, mm-hmm. And we had been in the order, what, a couple of years uh, before we had a, a yearly meeting. Uh, here in Des Moines, and after that meeting, our area counselors then were moving uh, out of their position, and they came to ask asked us if uh, we would like to become area counselors for Western Iowa. So, and uh, we said yes, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so here we are. As so, with so many things in Act of Faith, not knowing fully what you're getting into yeah. as well, but yeah. Kara, uh, so equestrian, sepulcher, Jerusalem, yeah. I mean, it sounds um, very... You, mystical here, you well, know, and like it a does, Dan Brown novel or something. It does date back to the Crusades. <laughs> yeah. It dates back to 1099 and the Crusades. And um, uh, what our mission is, is helping Christians in the Holy Land. So you really can see the connection uh, with the Crusades. And um, our mission now, uh, we accomplish that through prayer, through financial support, and uh, through encouraging pilgrimages to the Holy Land. All right. So, yeah, that kind of medieval origins and, you know, the, the Knights Templar and all mm-hmm. those different yeah. things. But right. But even then, there was maybe perhaps a, an accent not on, on waging battle or trying to vanquish uh, the, the Muslims in any way. And it certainly it's not a, a combative group today you no, know, in no. any way. Right. You know. Yeah. You know, during the Crusades, you know, they would have swords and armor and everything. And that's not the way we do it today. It's through, you know. <laughs> yeah. kind of look down upon but, yeah. Yeah. but it's through you know our prayer and our, our financial support for the christians in, in the holy land so there's only i believe there's only like four percent of the people in the holy land right now are christian and so we, they need our support so we can you know keep our christian identity there yeah well, to mm-hmm. actually have a presence and not just have these museums or these churches right. in some way yeah i mean and, go ahead please oh the um, main source of our contributions goes to the Latin patriarch in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. and that is primarily for educational okay. to go to support the schools in the first place. So, you know, that was a no-brainer for you, yeah. given your, your local <laughs> yeah. right. education. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the cares, I mean, the Universal Latin Church on Good Friday always takes up a collection for the support of the Holy Land. And mm-hmm. that's all devoted, and we do that uh, each year in every parish. But you're doing this year round. This is a year round endeavor, is right. that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct. So w- there's different lieutenancies uh, throughout the world. There's uh, 15 lieutenancies in North America, and they're mm-hmm. kind of divided out by states. And so in our lieutenancy, which is the Northern Lieutenancy, there are uh, eight states, and mainly in the central part of, of America here. And um, those donations from those uh, folks in, in our uh, lieutenancy, we donated usually on average 900000 to a million dollars a year that go to the Holy Land to help support folks in the Holy Land. Wow, that's, that's quite, a, quite a sizable uh, bit of support there. Oh, that's right. tremendous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and you, as you mentioned, and you, you say Christians, and I appreciate that, that, yes, there's Latin Rite Catholics, 
But there's other Christian rites, right? There are Chaldeans, there are you know, Ethiopian Orthodox, there are many other rites. Right? And, and the amazing thing about that, the schools that are supported by the Holy Sepulcher um, really are, I mean, they're Catholic schools, but there's probably more people from a Muslim faith than there are in the Catholic. But that's on purpose to help bring people together, you know, so there can be, you know, uh, work towards renewed peace, you know, in that area and cooperation, uh, you know, with the people there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's always a, a delicate and nuanced affair. Uh, the, uh, you know, even sometimes the relationships with our Jewish brothers and sisters take some diplomacy as well, right? That uh, We know there's a radical element within the, the Palestinian faction, but for the most part, many of the Palestinian people, whether they're you know, Muslim or Christian, you know, are peaceable people who just are trying to have a place to call yeah. home. Right. Yeah. So, so ha have you been fortunate to, to make that pilgrimage? Well, in November of this year, yeah. we're supposed to go. The plane yeah. tickets are bought. Uh, that, we're going with a uh, group with the Holy Sepulchre. Yes. And uh, which is our, like, I think four times it's been canceled because of COVID. <laughs> but <laughs> we've been trying to get there. Uh, and, and I think it's great because not only, you know, we go on these pilgrimages and it's there to, you know, walk in the footsteps uh, of God. But also, to, you know, to kind of bring that realism, you know, uh, you know, to the Gospels, you know, to us to see these places. And um, the also good thing about the people that, you know, part of the Holy Sepulchre that go to, uh, to the Holy Land is that they get to meet the people that they're helping. You know, they get to go to the schools and the businesses and things like that, that people, you know, we get to meet, meet those. And I think that'll really bring it home. And you know, we've talked making to, it personal, uh, baby, uh, making it personal. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we've talked to some people that have come back, you know, just recently, you know, uh, and they say they just come back, you know, changed person. So I'm really looking forward to, to having that uh, experience. Well, if you need some encouragement, hope that this is really going to materialize, Kelly. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. so you just uh, returned a couple months ago, right? Uh, Correct. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I mentioned to you guys, we, yeah. uh, us too, we, Third time's a charm. We finally went in May uh, with Father Michael Amadeo of uh, oh. Our Lady's Immaculate Heart Parish in Ankeny. Um, I don't know if you want me to talk about my experience. Well, you, we, we got you before a little bit, but I'd love to. Yeah. I mean, what place, what kind of things are still resonating with you and maybe yeah. with some, some months actually, to reflect? Yeah. For sure. I mean, that's why, yeah, I will write a column about it. I wanted to wait so I had time to reflect. But for sure, the, the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, I mean, mm -hmm. was one of the, in fact, there was one day we were walking back to the hotel and it was not the day we were supposed to go. And my husband's like, oh, you want to, we weren't with the group. He's like, do you want to go? I'm I, I'm not emotionally ready for this. Like, yeah. all I see is like Golgotha the hill, like behind the wall. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, yeah. uh, but we did go. It was amazing. We had, we had, um, you know, the tour and then we went back another day and we did mass and we were upgraded to this altar that was literally right next to where Jesus went on the cross. So that was amazing. Yeah. yeah it was for sure yeah. life changing. Everything yeah. you read in the Bible by Jesus comes to life. I think love it yeah we're really looking forward to it yeah Sea of galilee great yeah. i don't know if you'll be i mean i've talked to some seminarians who are actually were locked in overnight that's one of the privileges some people can do locked in and you know kind of have the, the the early morning dawn break you know the, of the resurrection so I mean, wow a compelling thing so you know i i imagine the nights have uh, some connections yeah. 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 <laughs> doors open for you yeah, in yeah. a way all right so there's a, a, you know, I remember just before I was uh, ordained and installed Bishop of Des Moines, almost three years ago, my goodness, um, uh, there was the, the gathering, Midwest gathering, was in Des Moines, Des Moines hosted right. it. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And so a great privilege. You were not at the counselors at that time. Right? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so now Omaha, so our Spirit Catholic radio listeners, look out, there's going to be a bunch of knights from uh, yeah. You know, riding around on horses. No, 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 no. downtown <laughs> Omaha. With all their metal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Chain mail. That's right, towards. There will probably be usually be around that. seven to 800 we're, members we're, that, that attend the annual meeting. Yeah, so it'll, right. be, yeah. it'll be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So and that will be from our lieutenancy, which is, uh, you know, the eight states. Okay, yeah. so, so no wonder you need two hotels. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We drove past the convention center a couple of weeks ago, and it's like, yeah, it looks like a great location—a convention center and a hotel on either side. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah. It should be great. Now, I mean, maybe you can't talk about it. Maybe there are aspects mm-hmm. like the fourth degree of the yeah. Knights of Columbus or something yeah. here, but am I going to have to memorize Aramaic or uh, <laughs> you know, passages of, uh, of Cyril of Jerusalem's yeah. mystagogical catechesis no. or something? You know, you, you know the, uh, the order, the equestrian order is, is not a secret organization. It's just that not a lot of people have heard about <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. you know? And uh, so it, no, there's no no secret handshake. Or anything like that. <laughs> no hazing either. No, no. you know, so there's some. Don't be surprised when they throw the bag over there. Yeah, he puts you away. You know, th- there are some rituals, you know, as part of um, becoming a member. You know, and uh, so there are some, you know, medieval like rituals that kind of, you know, are still, you know, part of uh, uh, the exemplification. You know, as far as becoming a, a knight. Uh, of the order, so I don't want to give too much away, but okay. yeah, Ooh, it, it's, it's nice. N- no, it's nothing, just nice nothing emblazoned on my skin <laughs> or anything. <laughs> no, okay. no branding or anything like that. Bag over the head and whisk <laughs> where, where are we? Uh, last, last stop, Wyoming. You know. <laughs> You? You, better, you better share with somebody your phone coordinates. So, so there are lay people, there are clergy, uh, and all members. Uh, yeah, correct. Uh-huh. So there's there usually around ten to fourteen bishops that attend the annual meeting. Um, there's many more than that that can't attend that are part of the order. But the masses are probably the high point. Wouldn't you say, yeah, Joe? it was fantastic. I mean, last year uh, it was in uh, South Dakota and their cathedral there. And it's just like the beginning, you know, I could just feel, you know, the spirit be with you. I mean, you get goosebumps and you could kind of, you know, your eyes kind of well up, you know, going to tear. It's just, uh, you know, it's just that beautiful. You know, and you just kind of feel that that coming upon you. So yeah. I just really enjoy let's, the mass. Let's pause on that beautiful note. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll visit the Pop Eaters. You're listening to Make It a Personal with Bishop Johnson. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarah strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsara.org, join org. Thank you, Sarans, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Established in Des Moines in 1924, St. Vincent de Paul assists those living in poverty to become self-sufficient by helping to remove roadblocks on their journey out of poverty. St. Vincent de Paul helps with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner reentry. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul, svdpdsm.org. Welcome back to Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson, and we are discussing the equestrian order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem. Karen and Joe, thanks for remaining with us here as well. Uh, so I was uh, at uh, Father John Harmon's uh, actual funeral mass out in uh, Queens, New York, and uh, St. Gregory of the Great Parish. The pastor, Father Edward Kuturka, had the letters KCHS after him, and I mm-hmm. said, is this a religious order, or what is yeah. it? He says, no, Knight Commander of the Holy, Holy Sepulchre. Sepulchre. So obviously right. there's a certain rank that uh, certain people are at, in all of this. Correct. Yep. You kind of, um, there's a promotion process that you go through, um, and you get promoted about every three, four years or so, depending if you meet certain uh, standards. So I think a bishop comes in as a uh, Knight Commander, Commander Star, star uh, of the Holy Sepulchre. So and then you, done nothing. And you have done nothing. This. Done nothing to earn this. <laughs> Except to so. say yes, which we're very appreciative of. So. Oh, what a patronage system. But uh, I'll try to be, uh, live up to the, the, the standard here. Well, but uh, uh, something that, you know, we talk about the medieval flavor of all of this, it's just kind of evident in, in the attire that's uh, for that. And there's a piece of art. Kara, talk right. to us about yeah. that. Um, we do have um, capes or robes that uh, you're vested in at the investiture mass. Um, the men wear white and the women wear um, black, but they have the red Jerusalem cross on them. And um, those are uh, made by... Uh, Order of Sisters in South Dakota, and they pray over them as they make them. They're blessed at the at the mass before you're vested in them. So clergy and lay alike get this, right? Um, I, you, I know you for us, it's Mosetta. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yep. All these Italian names. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But uh, 
And there's maybe more than a few costume changes uh, yeah. during the weekend. Uh, there's a, a, I think Saturday, I think is, or Sunday, I think is what there's a lot of, uh, going in from casual attire to business attire into a tux, you know, and, and so there's a lot of, a lot of changing going back and forth. So you won't but, have to change. Just yeah, you won't have to change. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It takes me a while. This yeah. is, I, I was saying to Father Aquinas Nichols at the Basilica, is this ever going to get easier to get to dress than the Episcopal uh, robes and things that are part of this as well? But yeah. uh, so, I mean, and it's not just make believe. I mean, there's a certain mm-hmm. dignity and I think mm-hmm. you've got a certain kind of sense of tradition and mm-hmm. historical mm-hmm. connection. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It kind of brings us back to, you know, uh, the roots of, of the order, you know, 900 or so years ago. So, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then also, you know, when if you come part of the order, you're, you're knighted and the bishop will do that with his crozier instead of a sword. He has a crozier that he'll knight you with. So, mm-hmm. and that's kind of a, a, a newer wrinkle that, that we've seen. So, mm-hmm. and, uh, it'll be good. So, yeah. No, I mean, ritual should convey an awakened reverence and, and, sense of, of the holy and also a sense of our calling to, to give up ourselves ever more in, in that beautiful way of, of kind of connection. And again, stir us to prayer. You know, I, I mentioned some of the Christian churches, but the Syrian and Coptic churches, you know, among those who, yeah, their their existence is precarious in the Middle East. And, uh, you know, we know that the, there are martyrs being made still in so many ways. And so mm-hmm. your support and the support of the young people in particular is uh, uh, very inspiring. If someone were interested, uh, kind of maybe by our conversation, to, to check it out, what would you uh, recommend uh, to them? We do have a website for our lieutenancy, and that is eohsjnorthern.com, and that's just for the northern lieutenancy. Um, they could e- also email us, and our email is eohsjwesterniowa at gmail. So why don't you repeat those for the listeners, okay. for people who are slow like me. <laughs> the website is eohsjnorthern.com, and the uh, email is eohsjwesterniowa at gmail. And I know you commented to me that the, the funds and the support really get to where they're destined. The administrative costs are minimal in this. Yeah, like 5% of spent on administrative costs, the rest of it goes directly to the Holy Land. Because yeah, you're you're not drawing a hefty salary and all of this. Uh, no, no, <laughs> far from it. No. Thank you for yeah. being with us. This is very in, in, instructive and uh, inspiring. Look forward to Great. seeing you in Omaha. Yeah, thank Great. You. Yeah. Thank you for coming part of the order. We're really happy and honored that you decided to join us. And thanks for having us here today. This has been another edition of Making It Personal with Bishop Johnson. You can hear Making It Personal with Bishop William Johnson every week on Iowa Catholic Radio and iowacatholicradio.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Making It Personal is provided by Sarah Vocations Ministry. Learn more at joinserra.org.